Alphonse Desjardins, 100 years ago, created, opened cases in Ontario and even in USA because for him it was important to expand and, and look at the needs of the population over there. They say that talking is a necessity. Listening is an art. I couldn't agree more. Listening is how I learn the most. During this podcast, we get to meet inspiring, passionate experts from the business community. I am Guy Cormier. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. Today, I am with Denis Dubois, Executive Vice President of Wealth Management and Life and Health Insurance. And we want to talk about Desjardins' uh, expansion operations across Canada. So thank you very much, Denis, for being with me. Hey, thank you for the invitation, Guy. And um, honestly, I'm really excited. It's a topic I'm passionate about. So uh, looking forward to talk about Desjardins' presence uh, across the country. I like to remind everyone that uh, Desjardins was found in Levy in 1900. But I think it's worth taking a couple of minutes just to talk about how the organization has grown since 1900. And maybe just have a step back. I came at Desjardins 30 years ago. And at that time, Desjardins didn't have the same national profile that we have right now. I think it's quite the same for you, Denis. Yes, it's the same, Guy. I joined a bit after you, so 20 years ago in 2003. And it was in the midst of the integration of one of our acquisition in Canada, which was the acquisition of the uh, property and casualty insurance subsidiaries of CIBC. So uh, I joined as we were uh, into uh, that work. And so this was, uh, and that did influence my uh, my uh, work at Desjardins since the beginning. And Denis, I think, and I'm convinced that that path into Desjardins had a very strong influence on you because yes, it was a very important acquisition at that time, but it was also a kind of early steps for us into the big insurance market outside of Quebec. So we can say, Denis, that you have been really involved in Desjardins Pan-Canadian growth for nearly 20 years. And I would like just to hear from you these 20 years uh, in this pathway regarding non-organic growth and acquisition. Day. So just at the beginning, so I could feel the transformation of the organization in 2003 as this was new for that group, our, our property and casualty insurance group. But and that did evolve over time and had so professional, but also personal experiences through those 20 years. In fact, one of uh, probably uh, an important moment was when uh, my family uh, and I moved to uh, Ontario. So yeah, we, it's true. You had to move in Ontario. In 2010, we were there for a couple of years. So uh, really moved to... Uh, the kids, everyone. To Toronto, the family, kids went to school for two years uh, in Toronto. So this was both a, a personal and a professional experience uh, that did shape uh, a, a lot of, of things because in those two years, so I was able also to be close to the market to better understand what was happening, our employees, uh, our partners. I did travel over the, the years, but those two years were very important uh, on my perspective uh, regarding Desjardins presence uh, across the country. And I'm curious, what was the reaction of the family, the kids, when you decided to come back to Quebec? So it was mixed. It was I, mixed. So uh, for Charlotte, she was a bit younger. So transition was a bit more challenging for her. So coming back, she was she was pretty okay with it. This was, it was not diffi a difficult decision for her. Guillaume was a bit older, so our, so our, our son. And uh, so for him, uh, was able over those two years to make friends. Uh, played hockey, did a lot of things there. So for him to get back uh, was a bit more challenging. And for Isabel, uh, so uh, my my partner for her was uh, it was the right time to get back. So <laughs> so but so mix mix feeling as we've decided to move back to Quebec in 2012. Wow, uh, let's go somewhere else now. Denis Desjardins is a, is a very well-established uh, organization, cooperative in Quebec. And some people, maybe sometime, might wonder why we need to expand outside uh, our province. Why do we want to pursue uh, a national growth strategy? 
And I like to ensure them that the goal is, is always the same, is to meet the needs of our members and our clients, to help them in their own growth, uh, to continue to look at some opportunities to serve them better. So for me, there is a direct link between serving members and clients effectively, and at the same time, pursue our, our goals and, and do even more for them. So I would like to hear from you about uh, why do we need to expand uh, outside Quebec? Probably the first reason why uh, we've expanded over time was just to be able to answer the need of our existing members that were growing across the country and they were looking for a provider to support them. Just think about the employer. So looking to have a partner that will support them across the country versus having multiple partners to work with based on where uh, they were doing business. So that was one of the first reasons. It's really just to be able to support and answer the needs of our members. And the second reason is you do compete against players that are a global and, and they do get scale benefit. And we're uh, in a period of time where uh, technology is very present. There's significant investment that needs to be done. And so when you need to make those investments, and if you do have scale, it's easier to be able to make those. So it does have an impact at the end, even on the competitiveness of our offer to our members here in Quebec or uh, across the country. So that's uh, the reason why uh, we need to, to look at, follow our members, but also be able uh, to get that scale for benefit on, on, on our pricing, for example, but also investment, talent. Uh, when you yeah. do get that scale, some people want to work and have a bit more uh, exposure. So you're able to attract talent also. So there's all kinds of benefit that comes also with that scale, uh, scale effect. And I would like to hear from you about, I feel that with expansions and, and scale, you also have more uh, capabilities regarding innovation. Uh, we are in an industry right now where technology is more and more important in the way we do business with our clients and our members. And the fact that Desjardins has reached a certain size in Canada uh, open doors for us, open many doors for us for partnerships. And sometimes it will it will give us even few steps ahead of uh, industry trends. Uh, I just think about in the insurance industry, about telematics and solutions uh, using technology. I, I would like to hear from you about innovations and, and digital uh, transformation. Yeah, to your point, this is another benefit of, of, of getting that, that larger presence because of the scale. And so on the telematic front, telematic is, is really using data uh, in order to uh, be able to track uh, what's happening as you drive. So that's, that's the essence of telematics. Uh, so when we were looking for a solution, uh, we wanted to find the best solution for our members and clients. And so we've started to look out uh, not just here in Quebec or in Canada, but across the globe of who was providing that innovating uh, technology. And we found uh, that the best uh, organization was located in the state. It's, it's called Cambridge Mobile Technology. And, and they were uh, looking to find the one player per country that they would work with and they would give those organizations exclusivity. So because of our uh, scale, but because also of, of who we are, CMT decided to assign an exclusivity deal in Canada with Desjardins. Uh, but that organization, what was great also in that story is, is we got the exclusivity of that, honestly, leading a global solution in telematic. But we were also at the same time, because they were doing business with other insurers in other countries, we were able to develop a network of relationship with an organization like State Farm in the States, Discovery in South Africa, leading players in their, in their country with whom we can talk with today in order to say, how do we evolve that solution or other solution? So that's another thing that today in the, in the world that is getting more and more global, having that access is to the benefit of uh, everyone, uh, including our members, but, but our clients also. And at the same time, we continue to work with fintechs, uh, startups here in Quebec, in Montreal, in different regions in Quebec to help them to grow because of our scale or because of who we are. We support the ecosystem of innovation with fintechs and, and startups and insurtechs. 
Absolutely. In that case, the best player was located in the States, but in other uh, situations, the best player is located here uh, in, in, in Quebec or could be in, in other provinces across uh, the country. And we do have uh, multiple means to get in contact with those uh, fintech, insurtech uh, type of organization. The Coopératon is yeah. one of those examples, yeah. uh, but we have um, many others where uh, we do uh, we are able to connect with the ecosystem and then again, uh, see how we can bring that innovation. And sometimes we do help. That's a good point. We do help those startups here in Quebec yeah. to even get reach across the country yeah. because of that scale. Yeah. So Desjardins do also provide the ability the other way around. So, so there's, there's multiple benefits. We help them to go to another level because of our scale, and exactly. because of our connections, and because of uh, of our partners around the globe. So exactly. we connect them with them, and it helps them these companies to grow faster. Sometimes, absolutely. I would like to take a step back, Denis. Now, one hundred twenty three years after uh, Alphonse Desjardins launched uh, Desjardins Group, we are the largest cooperative financial group in Canada and the fifth largest in the world, uh, more than $400 billion uh, in assets, uh, more than 7.5 million members and clients, uh, fifty-eight around 58,000 employees. Um, and Desjardins continue to have a strong influence in Quebec, but outside Quebec. And actually, it's fun for one reason. Alphonse Desjardins, 100 years ago, uh, created, opened cases in Ontario and even in USA because for him it was important to expand and, and look at the needs of the population over there. And we still have a, a very strong case in Ontario, the Desjardins Credit Union, Ontario Credit Union, still operating today uh, in the old province, uh, a unique entity uh, with uh, business centers, uh, wealth management activities, uh, and the expansion and growth over there is uh, is quite amazing. Uh, if I look on the insurance uh, side of our activities, also uh, in the last 20 years, Denis, expansions, acquisitions, growth uh, across Canada are quite important. Absolutely. And wh why do we talk uh, about acquisition? It's because those markets were and are still very well served. So there's players that are serving those customer. Uh, they were in the past, they're still today. So when you want to get that footprint in a new market, acquisition is a way to make those steps as you go through uh, the ladder. So we did a few acquisitions. When you look at the last uh, 20 to the years, probably a bit more than 10 acquisitions were done. Uh, some of the significant ones were first with Laurentian uh, Group. Uh, there was Imperial Life back in the 90s on the uh, life pension side. So this was a first transaction. I talked a bit earlier about the uh, the property and casualty subsidiaries of CIBC back in 2000. That was our first step into a property and casualty uh, outside of Quebec. Uh, then we, we could talk about 2015, again, on the property and casualty insurance side with the State Farm transaction. That was a big one. 2018. Sometimes it's, it's about partnership. So we've created a partnership with uh, the credit unions and created uh, Aviso Wealth, uh, which is an amazing organization that was created and is doing very well since then uh, in partnership with the, the credit union system. Uh, and just recently, two uh, other acquisitions were announced. Uh, so on the property and casualty engine side and also on, on the distribution side for wealth, and uh, life and health insurance. So, uh, so those acquisitions were really a uh, milestone in order to get that presence. And in between, we were able to develop, generate growth with those foundational blocks. So it's a mix of acquisition to get that footprint, but at the same time, uh, you do need to generate profitable growth down the road. So we were able uh, over those last 30 years to do both. It's interesting when you said about the, the credit unions ecosystem, the credit union ecosystem in Canada, because it's true that we have a strong relationships with more than 200 credit unions in the country. We support them uh, in many, many ways of partnerships. Uh, actually, we have a company called Calabria, 
who is uh, the main credit card supplier for almost all of the credit unions in Canada. So yes, this partnership is very important for us. Actually, today, there is nearly 40% of all of the operating incomes that comes from outside Quebec, mainly from Ontario, Atlantic provinces, Western Canada. And it's around $7 billion that are largely made up uh, of insurance uh, premiums. So I think uh, we have to be proud of this footprint. And also, not only in Canada, but when I look at all of our branches in Florida to support our members and clients who go and travel and, and go to Florida in USA, and we're celebrating our 30 years uh, 30 year anniversary uh, with uh, with uh, the Desjardins Bank in Florida. We uh, we have a long standing relationship also with Crédit Mutuel, a huge uh, cooperative in Europe uh, since 1989. Actually, they are shareholder. There there are investors uh, in DGIG. Um, we launched a partnership in 2018 with Ciparex, a transatlantic fund. 75 million euros uh, really to foster the growth of companies here in Quebec and Canada uh, in Europe. So it's, yes, it's in Canada, but it's also around the world that we have strong partnership and we continue to develop them. And when I look at the future, Denis, yes, we are really proud of what we have accomplished uh, since we want to stay focused uh, in the Canadian market property casualty insurance, life and health insurance, wealth management. How do you see the next few years regarding those uh, sectors? So we, we clearly need to continue that expansion uh, for the reason we've explained er earlier. Uh, there's also a concept uh, that is called a risk diversification that is important in order to, uh, to make sure that the organization remains sustainable over the long term. So that brings that, like the fact that's diversification in our source of revenue is provide safety over time if something bad happens in one part of the group. Uh, but we'll keep the focus uh, over uh, the market of Ontario. Obviously, this is a, a province that is very close to Quebec. It's the largest province. So that's where we've expanded the most and we'll keep focus there and on those line uh, of business. Uh, I, I just want to react also yeah. as you were going through this uh, view over everything that we have here uh, in Canada or uh, in the rest of the world, those international activities. Uh, and I'm sure it's the same for you. When I, I speak with people who are uh, based in Quebec, uh, they, they don't realize the size that Desjardins has Absolutely. outside of the yeah. province of Quebec. So for them, when they start to see that, say, wow, and that generates pride uh, for, for, for people. Say, wow, this is significant. They're not aware. And it's, it's interesting also when you, you talk with people that are in other provinces and, and for them, some of them know Desjardins, but for a lot of them, they don't know. And, and to see the size of the organization, the impact it has in the province of Quebec is also something that they say, wow, it, this is impressive. So, so it's interesting because both groups like, don't really fully understand the scope uh, of the organization. I, same thing for me when I when I have meetings with partners and people around the globe and, and they look at Desjardins, they're like, oh my God, this organization started 122 years, three years ago with one person in Levy who started a financial institution and now after more than a century, it's huge like that in Canada, around the globe. Uh, really proud of what we have accomplished. And when I have discussion with people, you know, here in Quebec, and they look at what we have accomplished, we're proud of that. You don't have too many companies that are in business after a century in Quebec and built by people from Quebec for people from Quebec. You're so right. People are just proud of what we have accomplished as an organization, but as a society too with Desjardins. So I totally agree with you. Um, now I want to go somewhere else, Denis. Uh, we've probably, and you have probably learned a lot over your, your last 20 years uh, at Desjardins about expansion, about acquisition, some success stories, some challenges. Um, you led uh, and you worked on two of the biggest acquisitions of Desjardins. I would like to just share your experience, Denis, about what you, you learned and what you want to share with us. Yeah, it's good to talk about learning because it's not 
easy. Uh, it's it's not all about daily success. So there was uh, some challenges, some failure. Uh, but the, what's important is what you said is, is it's to learn from it. And and I guess today with with those experiences, because we've tried, I think we're we're getting pretty good about uh, how how we need to do this. And some of those learnings, the first one is, and and they are very simple. So the first one is. Be clear on why you're making the acquisition. Be clear on what you're trying to do here. Uh, so make sure that uh, the group knows and that, that the target or the entity that you're talking with is aligned with that. So that that's a basic but very important one. The second one is uh, it's one thing to make an acquisition, but this is not where you generate value. It's when you do deliver on, on those things that you've saw that can create value. So talking here about integration. So make sure that you'd have a real clear integration plan, that you follow that plan. You need to adjust. Sometimes it's not like if what you've thought and the context of a due diligence is exactly what will happen. So need to adjust, but stick uh, to the, the plan, have a plan and stick to it is very important. And lastly, and probably very important, it's the culture. So you need to have groups that will be able to work together. One of the things I've realized, and, and this was fascinating for me, really, when, when I was put into chief, my role as chief integration in some of those, some of those acquisition, it's when you see the two groups coming together and you start to see that the culture are different because they're not coming from the same background, different history, different business model, different paradigms. But what's important is that they share common values so that they can work through those differences and, and shape that new culture. Very, very important because you need to bring those two things together. And if they don't match, if they don't work together, it's going to be very hard to execute on that integration plan and that strategy that you had at the beginning. So, so culture, values is something you need to understand and, and be careful and mindful and put energy on as you do the work. It's very interesting regarding culture because, you know, with yeah, more than 5,000 employees outside Quebec, more than 5,000 independent advisors working in Ontario, Atlantic provinces, Western Canada, you have more than 10,000 people who don't necessarily have the history of the foundation of Desjardins or the values. So how do you connect that? And that's where culture values are, are so important. And it's part of an acquisition and an integration in, in the mindset that we have to put ourselves uh, in. Uh, the other aspect I would like to hear from you is regarding cooperative values, cooperative mission, cooperative nature. Uh, I have some people sometimes who, who will tell me, you know, yeah, it's nice expansion, growth, but do you lose your values? Do you lose uh, your, your cooperative uh, uh, nature or mission? And me, I like to, I uh, like, I'm totally convinced of it's on the contrary. It's totally possible to combine growth and the vitality of our mission because growth is for our members and clients to follow them in their expansion and their growth and to give us scale, like you said. And, and, and I really feel that expansion and continue to grow outside Quebec reinforce our capacity to help our members to become financially more independent or empower them financially. So, Denis, how do you see this connection or this challenge, if there's a challenge between cooperative nature and scale? And Well, the foundation of our model is to provide product and services to members. And so when we do get out uh, into transaction or even signing new clients, like that speaks to people, our, 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 the nature of what we are, which is to provide those products and services to members and clients. So that's the first thing. That's the essence of Desjardins. And, and on that front, when we, we, stick with, we talk with the employees that are joining the organization, advisor, partners, like, so they like that. It's, it's, it's aligned to what they want to have in a partner. So that's probably the, the most important thing. Then... In our mission, we do have also that uh, involvement into the communities. And we do bring those same values in every market where we go. And we have multiple examples. Uh, if I look, for example, in property and casualty insurance on auto insurance. So we do have partnerships we've now built across Canada around uh, security. Uh, so we have partnership with an organization called Parachute, for example, 
that is national, we will do the same regarding wellness, mental wellness. So we do bring also that community engagement in every market where we uh, we provide product and services. I, I totally agree, Denis, because when I look just at the Good Spark Grants program that we launched during the pandemic, and now it's more than $6 million that we have uh, donated to more than 300 SMEs uh, in Canada. So it's real money to help real companies for real projects. Uh, I look just at the uh, Kids Help Phone campaign to support young Canadians' mental health. Uh, we donated $1 million to them. Uh, so I think this mission of being part of the community and contributing to the the empowerment of our communities and support them is as strong as ever. And with more capacity, we can be more generous or more uh, integrated and collaborative with, with the communities. So uh, we, we could talk about it so much more. But thank you so much, Denny, uh, for sitting down with me today. Uh, it was really inspiring uh, just to get a real sense of, of Desjardins now. Where is Desjardins today? And I really hope that, like me, our members and our clients and our employees and the people who listen to the, this podcast uh, are just really proud. Proud of Desjardins, but also proud of what we're doing for always in the best interest of our members and clients and what we're doing for communities across Canada. But also have a better understanding of the challenges regarding expansion so, Denis, uh, when you look uh, again at the next few years and when you look at our future, any comments? Uh, how do you see that? So first, I'm uh, very confident in our ability to continue providing the right product and services and serving the needs of our members and clients. And I do see more expansion uh, across the country. Uh, there's uh, more room for us uh, in Quebec, but it's true also uh, in those those other markets. So you could uh, still uh, uh, look forward for Desjardins to maybe do a bit more transaction also in the next uh, few years. Thank you, Denis, for sitting down with me today. I'm sure it was really inspiring to get a real sense of where Desjardins is today. And I really hope that like me, our members, our clients, our employees, the ones who are listening to us are just proud of Desjardins. Because yes, Desjardins is a cooperative that is so close to our communities and still continue to be close to all of our communities and across Canada. And more than ever, I really feel that we have a promising future ahead of us. So thanks again, Denny. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Guy, for the uh, conversation. So I want to thank all of our production team for their great work. And I want to thank you for listening. This was Guy Cormier. Join me on LinkedIn and Facebook. Once again, thank you for tuning in and most of all, for listening. <laughs> <laughs>